Hi, my name is Stephanie and today I want to talk to you about Anthony William and his pseudoscience regarding autism. Thank you so much to my patrons for voting on today's topic as well as for the few commenters who actually uh, alerted me to this by informing me that they knew the cause of autism and it wasn't genetics. Anthony William is also known as the medical medium. He's commonly featured on the site Goop, which is well known for being a never ending source of pseudoscience and misinformation. He claims he has a spirit that tells him medical information and that is why he does not have to cite research because he apparently knows things by this spirit that other people don't and therefore they should just take his word for it. Don't get this confused with any like religion that I'm aware of. He's not claiming that this is like the Christian God, Muslim God, any other religion God. He's just saying that it's a spirit. As his site's disclaimer states, he is not a doctor or a professional of any kind. Yet a lot of people take his claims as gospel, the truth, whatever else as this somehow magical mystery that's going to solve all of their problems because he said so. Now I've not the time nor the interest to go into the many many people he has scammed and gotten a lot of money from in return for a whole lot of nothing useful from him including many people and families who have autism. There are a lot of very heartbreaking stories and scam stories and alleged accusations, allegations, all those sorts of things. I'm not going to go into all of that. However, I was interested in looking into the particular claim that he makes that autism is caused by residual mercury. Now this was all actually sparked by someone who informed me that Autism was just simply caused by an ancestral residual mercury that builds up from centuries and centuries behind, has been passed down all the way to you, and that has caused your autism. These heavy metal toxins have caused problems in your brain and now you're autistic. And of course, a lot of people hearing heavy metal toxicity and this concept of mercury being residual from ancestors and whatnot, they look into how do I get this out of my body? Of course, Mr. William has a heavy metal detox protocol that many people are prompted to follow in an attempt to rid themselves of these toxins. Now, in my experience, anything that says protocol that you're supposed to follow tends to lie in the pseudoscience world and the woo-woo and the things that just do not have any substantial evidence and tend to hurt people more than help people. Anthony is also the originator apparently of that whole celery juice fad that used to be huge and I guess still is a thing. The danger of pseudoscience is that it can sound convincing. It tends to use half-truths to pull you in and make you think, oh this is the thing and you know this is somehow that thing that no one else has discovered and it makes a little bit of sense here and there's some little facts here and somehow they manage to take all of that and lump it in with a bunch of garbage and just false information and stuff that sometimes just comes out their butt and people believe it because there's just a little bit of truth that makes it seem like it could be a real thing. Mercury and heavy metals can be toxic that is true and people do sometimes need to go to the hospital in an emergency to go through a real detox in a hospital setting where they do things that should not be done outside of a hospital by someone who doesn't know what they're doing. And again, with heavy metals and whatnot, we are aware of the issue. That's why we have guidance with like the CDC and different agencies that are, are set in place to help people in their workplaces and make sure that, you know, the water isn't contaminated. Understand that those situations only happen with high amounts of exposure or a good long amount of chronic exposure to a small amount. This means you're going to be consistently around heavy metals that are building up in your body and basically harming you or you've been exposed to a large amount. Like this isn't something that just casually goes by with everybody. If it was, we would have more of an issue going on here. However, a lot of pseudoscience 
Times really, really loves to pick on one thing, and since there isn't a whole lot of information around it, it can be easily used as a way to fearmonger. When it comes to heavy metal toxicity, just drinking celery juice or going on some special diet to detox isn't going to help you. You need to go to an emergency room if you've been exposed and you just found out that you've been exposed to high levels of heavy metals. You need to go to an emergency room and get checked out so that they can figure out what's going on, if you're okay, if you're safe, if it's gonna clear out, or if they need to help you. But drinking celery juice or some other fad diet is not going to help you. Now, as I said before, we are aware that this could pose a problem and that's why we have guidance and rules, regulations, etc. However, William has these claims that kind of circumvent that and claim that basically anything we've ingested or been exposed to has built up in our body and then it's been passed down. So every single great, 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 great grandparent has ever had mercury in them has passed it down to you. Now, if that sounds absurd, that's because it is. When searching for any sort of scientific research that would point to the possibility of this being a thing, I found a study done on zebrafish. So they exposed zebrafish sperm directly ex vivo to 24 hours of mercury, specifically methylmercury. Now ex vivo just means outside of their normal conditions. From the sperm, came to basically come together to do all the things that need to happen for a fish to hatch from their little fish egg and become a little baby fish, there was abnormal neurobehavior in that zebra fish. Why? Because of something called epigenetic transgenerational inheritance. Basically, the toxic exposure caused an issue with the genetic material, and of course, that affected that fish. And of course, if that fish goes on to have offspring, we know by genetics that they might inherit things. And of course, with uh, DNA that has been messed with, genes that have been messed with, that can pass down to other fish. They saw it in two following generations of abnormal neurobehavior. Now, honestly, this isn't really groundbreaking information. However, somehow people have taken that concept where yes, toxic exposure can mutate things, can damage things, and those things can be inherited if it damages the right things. It doesn't necessarily mean that the mercury itself was like in the sperm that became a fish that had babies and those babies inherited this fish's mercury. Like that's not how that works. The concept that somehow we've inherited generations worth of mercury in our bodies doesn't really make sense. It is possible for a toxin to affect someone's genetic information and for that to be passed down, yes. But the mercury itself is not shown to be passed down here. Even then, from exposure, you're not likely to have a lot of transmission. In fact, there's a lovely infographic I'm gonna pop up on the screen here. After a few generations, you're more likely to have no transmission of the epigenetic change than stable or unstable transmission of it, according to this figure. So even in the case that someone is exposed to toxic amounts of mercury and it affects their genetic information, affects, of course, their baby, and it might pass down a generation or two, it's not likely that that's going to just continue and continue and continue. This is different from just your inheritable genes and having like a family line of people who have brown hair that doesn't just go away. Whereas a change in the information from an exposure will kind of eventually correct over generations. The only possibility that holds weight here in the transfer of actual mercury is when a child is in the womb. If the mother is exposed to high amounts of mercury, well, then of course your baby's going to be exposed because methylmercury can pass through the placenta. Of course, you're giving nutrients to the baby. You guys are very, very connected. And this is why mothers are encouraged to stay away from fish while pregnant. However, this is not the same as somehow a giant toxic buildup of mercury in your brain just casually passing to your baby. That's not how this works. Your body is actually pretty good at getting rid of things. Toxic metals, heavy metals can build up. That is a thing. It can happen. However, it usually doesn't really affect much unless if you're in a high exposure area, either 
under uh, a lot of exposure in a small amount of time or enough consistent exposure over a long amount of time. Mercury is capable of building up in the brain. However, if for example, you have a mother who has mercury that has over time gotten in her brain, gotten in some of her organs. She's not going to be able to pass that to the baby because it's no longer in her blood. So the only time when there's really a real risk of the mother giving, you know, or transferring mercury to the child is when the mother is exposed while being pregnant. That makes it literally impossible for you to have ancestral mercury chilling out in your brain as someone proposed to me before. Now, Goop, of course, hosted an article that I believe most of it was from the medical medium. And in this article, they're talking about how our ancestors drank quick Quicksilver, which was like a lot of liquid mercury in it for lots of ailments and they drank it. Well, honestly, even though don't do that, that's a stupid thing to do. When you drink mercury, you don't get a whole lot of it actually in your body. It usually just kind of comes back out. It doesn't really absorb and do stuff. Now, inhaling and breathing in mercury is way worse. It, it, it does things a lot faster because of the way that your lungs work and that's going to put it immediately in your bloodstream and then you're going to have issues. However, to say like, oh, you know, my great, great, great grandpa drank Quicksilver all the time. So that got built up and then he passed it to so-and-so and she passed it to so-and-so and we just have been like building up this giant ball of mercury inside of our bodies. Wouldn't we all be dead by now? If it was true that we just all inherited somehow or had passed all of our <laughs> mercury residue to each other, we would be seeing super high amounts of mercury toxicity in people. Like, I'd be surprised that our population would be here right now. Anthony William is not alone in his ideals about the connection between autism and mercury. A 2012 study decided to look into this and compared the amount of mercury in the urine of autistic children versus a control group. Urine is one way that we can detect the levels of mercury in someone's body. And guess what this study found? there was no statistically significant difference between them in the amounts of mercury in their urine. Therefore, having the same amounts of mercury in a non-ASD group and an ASD group would lend to the idea that mercury doesn't cause autism. So not only does this study suggest that there is not an elevated amount of mercury in autistic people, but it also refutes an old theory that kind of arised from the issue of using hair samples to determine the amount of mercury in people's bodies. So they looked at this before and they actually found that the autistic children from their hair had lower amounts of mercury in their body. Again, this study doesn't support that either. So it's not an excessive amount or even a lower amount of mercury that is causing autism. We're not seeing any difference here. So obviously we have here facts, research, and data that show us that Anthony William is basically full of crap in regards of the idea that somehow we are just passing down lots of mercury and that mercury is causing autism. We do not see anything that supports this at all. In fact, it's completely ludicrous to suggest this. But unfortunately, of course, <laughs> people love to make money off of other people's desperation and concern. Obviously, if you're a parent of an autistic person, you might want to make them better if you think it's a bad thing. And if you're told that it's just toxicity that is like breaking down someone's brains and making their life hard, then you're gonna wanna do something about it. Conveniently, Anthony William has a heavy metal detox protocol for you to follow. And it's basically eating five certain foods. And I decided to look very quickly into these and to see why these foods were picked. And if there's any actual weight to the idea that these would somehow detox you from having heavy metals in your body. Now note that even though I didn't specifically see it here stated as uh, doing this particular protocol, will make you not autistic or less autistic. There are definitely people out there who are sharing their journeys of healing autism through this method. 
What I would like to say about this and many other diets that people believe heal their children of autism or make their autism less is if you're eating healthy foods and cutting out things that cause issues that we're just aware of in general, yeah, someone's gonna feel better. But that doesn't make them less autistic and you're not healing them of autism. And a lot of times, very sadly, these people are in total, complete and utter delusion and it's really sad to watch. Now the claim here is that all of these ingredients or whatever have to be ingested within 24 hours of each other because they're a tag team and they can, one part can like do one thing and then it might drop the mercury and the other heavy metals. And so the other one has to come in and pick it up and take it out. So yeah, it's, it's ridiculous and kind of insulting to the intelligence, honestly. Now first up is spirulina. I don't know if I'm saying any of these words correctly, but let's go for it. And they specify from Hawaii. The claim is that it draws out heavy metals from your brain, your central nervous system. But like, why do you have to list it that way? Because you're brain and your spinal cord together make up your central ner nervous system. So that's like saying your brain, your brain, your spinal cord. It's just kind of a stupid thing anyway. And your liver. This is one of those fun pseudoscience things where they take information, a little bit of, of truth, and then try to say that it applies to everything and it just it doesn't. So spirulina does actually draw toxins out of water and it's actually proposed as a way of helping you know water treatments and there is another study that looked at three different species of fish that were exposed to non-lethal amounts of I think it was zinc and the ones who had spirulina didn't deposit as much mercury. So what that's basically saying is if you were to be exposed to mercury or probably most likely to ingest mercury and then have spirulina, it's very likely that that would help to limit the amount that's being deposited and absorbed by your body. Of course, this is in fish. This hasn't been studied in humans for obvious ethical reasons, but it is likely that spirulina might be able to help you in the case that you like, for some reason, accidentally drank something in toxic levels uh, when it came to like heavy metals and stuff like that. And you had some spirulina, it might be able to bind some of that, reduce the impact. However, that has nothing to do with specifically targeting your brain and your central nervous system and your liver and drawing it out, we don't have any evidence of those claims at all. Now, before you run out and get spirulina just for the fun fact that you might <laughs> ingest less toxins or something, please consult a doctor first. One, this is basically pond scum for the fun fact. And two, there are people who can be negatively affected by this and other things in this list of ingredients. So please talk to your doctor first. This can actually cause detrimental effects for certain people. So don't just go out there and be like, oh, I heard this was a good food or good thing for me and um, hurt yourself. You know what I mean? We have barley grass juice extract powder, <laughs> which is purported to draw heavy metals out of your spleen, intestinal tract, pancreas, thyroid, and reproductive system. But the only thing that I find at all anywhere is that it's basically an antioxidant. Another so-called superfood and there is another kind of look into it as a way to help treat sewage. We have cilantro which is specifically claimed to get into hard to reach places and extract heavy metals. This one's literally just not <laughs> supported anywhere. I don't know why like certain ones are like they go in and they get to these places like you have zero proof of this. Zero. There's like nothing that would indicate that cilantro or any of these things specifically target specific areas. Not, none of this. None of this right here is substantiated and it annoys me so much. Now we do see some testing that does suggest, again with fish, that cilantro might be able to help reduce the toxic intake when you ingest it or are exposed to it. But again, this was done on fish, so we don't really know how that affects humans for sure. And two, that wouldn't be helping you with your residual mercury or specifically going into certain parts of your body and drawing it out. Like that's, that's not scientifically supported by anything. Then we have wild blueberries specifically from Maine. Now the, the thing about Maine is because there's like a certain part where they are grown that has the particular quality that they're trying to say is gonna magically draw toxins from the brain. This one again feels like one of those things they completely pulled out of their butt because I 
I don't see this as a thing anywhere in research that I could find. Then they claim that this basically is just to restore the effects of practically ripping out a bunch of old metal from your tissues. Something that is absolutely likely to not be happening in the first place. And then it ends with Atlantic dulce or dulce or whatever. I don't know. It's a particular kind of seaweed. Again, I'm not finding anything that would support the kind of claims that this site is purporting. And what's more frustrating is it's not like I can just look at their citations to see where they got this information, to see if they're trying to apply a little thing here to a broader thing, or if that is just a crap study or anything, because there are no studies, there are no citations, because the medical medium is apparently just above and advanced from science and doesn't require citations. So as for the heavy metal detox, I'm gonna call about 80% complete and utter BS. Not only are most of these completely and utterly baseless claims, the ones that do have a little bit of maybe a hint of why they would say that have not been shown in humans. We don't know how this actually works in human beings. However, some of these ingredients might be helpful in the case that you were to take them while you had mercury present in your blood or heavy metals present in your blood to help reduce the amount that your body absorbs because it would go into these things that are known to be able to draw out toxic metals from water. However, there is zero proof of this concept of it like going into your brain and going into different parts of your tissue and just ripping out, you know, old residual mercury that's just not supported at all. Please consult a doctor before deciding that you just want to do this because you want to because there are multiple items on this list that can be detrimental for people. You just really need to know if this is safe for you. Honestly, heavy metal toxicity is very rare in the United States. It is not likely that you have it. However, if you were to have it, you need to go see a doctor. If you're concerned about maybe that whole concept of like, oh my gosh, like what if, what if there's this mercury or what if there's all these heavy metals or whatever? The easiest way, the best, most efficient way to reduce your levels of heavy metals in your body is to take away the thing that is exposing you to it. So if you work in an area that has you exposed to heavy metals, if you remove yourself from that, your body will be able to filter your stuff out. You do not need some magical special diet or protocol to do these things. Your body was made to be able to handle this. And of course, not only that, we've already looked into the fact that one, mercury isn't going to be passed down from your great ancestors to just chill out in your brain, and two, mercury does not cause autism. In the case of autism, no one, including a quack who considers himself a medical medium, can 100% say for certain every case what the cause of autism is. We do see strong evidence upwards of 80% heritability, which means upwards of 80% of cases are contributed to genetics. You just, it just runs in your family. So I am very comfortable with the concept of heritability, of the concept of genetics, that it comes from our parents, our grandparents, DNA-wise. However, there are some situations that it could be coming from something else. We do see that there is a heightened chance of autism in certain situations while the baby is in the womb. So those things can be looked at. However, the whole mercury thing just doesn't hold up to research. Thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it or at the very least were informed by it. I highly encourage you to check out references that I have linked in the description below. I also have some DOI numbers just because I have access to EBSCOhost right now through my school and if I link you, you won't be able to actually get to it so you can research it up from the DOI number. So in some cases, that will be what is listed. So when I give you these kind of researchy types of videos that aren't just my personal experience, always feel free to check out my description box because I likely will have links or references or whatever to what I'm talking about where I got my information and you can look into it yourself. Let me know your thoughts about all of this in the comments below. And if you enjoy hearing autism related things from me, you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I do upload it to this channel every Thursday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. I hope that you're having a wonderful week and I'll talk to you in my next video.